So welcome to the second episode of our new series, The Other Bundesliga Calls, where we ring up players and coaches in the world of Austrian football and talk to them about their self-isolation, how they're training and talk about some of their football memories too. So today we're joined on the line by Stefan Schwab, the Rapid Vienna captain. Hi, Stefan. Hi, Eli. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah, thanks for joining us. We're going to start with some really quick questions, two options, and you just have to, to pick one. So first of all, do you prefer Netflix or Spotify? Normally Spotify. Spotify, okay. PlayStation or Xbox? PlayStation. Okay. FIFA or Pro Evolution Soccer? NBA 2K. <laughs> NBA, okay. The World Cup or the European Championships? World Cup. Yeah. Messi or Ronaldo? Messi. Okay. Weight training or cardio training? Mm, what was the first? Weight training. The so, like, calf training, yeah. Okay, ah, calf training. Uh, I'm more the cardio type, but I also like gym. But if I have to decide, I take cardio. Okay. Uh, are you a morning person or an evening person? More evening. Okay, that's good. We're speaking in the evening. Um, birthday or Christmas? Ooh, uh, Christmas. Winter or summer? Summer. Okay, and the last one, home-cooked food or takeout food? Ooh. Yeah, home-cooked food is, for me, most of the time, more better than um, food takeaway or somewhere in okay. restaurants. And good, it's nice. Okay, if you want to see the rest of our interview with Stefan, that will be on our YouTube channel and you can see highlights on our social media too. So let's get stuck into some more questions now. So obviously at the moment, Stefan, everyone is self-isolating. We're all at home. Where are you and, and who are you with? Yeah, the first um, two weeks of our quarantine, um, I was in Vienna with my wife. And um, but both of us, we are from Salzburg. I am from a smaller town um, called Salfelden. It's 60 kilometers away from Salzburg, um, like in the mountains. If you... And um, my wife is from Salzburg. And yeah, right now she is also pregnant. So we expect our baby in July. And um, her, yeah, thank you very much. And her doctor is also located in Salzburg. So that's why we drove um, around six, seven days ago, I'm back to Salzburg. And right now I'm in my hometown in Salfelden and she's in Salzburg. And yeah, we will stay there, like, I don't know, about one to two weeks more. It depends um, what will bring the future right now. And then we will go back to. Nice. Okay. It must be, it must be difficult for you as a, a footballer right now to, to train as normal. Obviously you're you're, you're stuck inside most of the time. Tell us about your training program and, and how often you're having contact with the coaches and, and what it's like. Yeah, right now, in the, we, if we start as a, like two weeks back, um, when we get the, the, the message that we have to be at home and that we have to train by ourselves, we got a plan for one week. And mm -hmm. yeah, after the first week, the second week, the new plan came, arrived and everything. And um, yeah, every week is different. Our athletic coach um, um, show us on videos or also on training plans, our, our exercises, what we have to do. And um, it's yeah, switching between um, cardio and also gym exercises. Mm -hmm. So right now we're doing a lot of cardio and also um, yeah, stabilization training with our own body weight. Um, so most of the time our day looks like that in the morning we have... Um, yeah, some gym exercises and then the afternoon cardio training. Or if you are strong or mentality a good person, you can do both trainings um, mm -hmm. in, in one exercise so that you take more than two hours for one training or you split it in uh, two, two trainings in a day. And also this week, our athletic coach started um, with the first um, training for all together. We were connected um, with... Um, 
yeah, all by phones and all by videos. And our athletic coach um, was also for us um, on a video. And um, we did together um, exercises. And yeah, it was good because we stayed all together um, just with the phone. But um, it was a good way to, to talk to the others and to train a little bit together. And it's very, very important now to be creative that um, nothing stucks after, yeah, two, three days. <laughs> Sure. It must be a very different experience anyway, being connected with your teammates by by video and, and training like that. But I've also seen on, on Instagram that you've been running in some, some rather snowy, spectacular scenery. So how often have you been going out for, for runs in the mountains as well? Yeah, that's um, what I talked about it, that I'm in my hometown in Salfelden and you have beautiful mountains around here. And yeah, if I am at home, I like the winter time and here is still winter time and um, my cardio trainings I'm doing outside, it's still allowed, but I also have to take care because um, you can't the risk injury or something like that. So I have also to be careful. Um, but since one week I was um, already three times up in the mountains because it's uh, very, how can I say, um, good for the mind, good for myself um, to do other trainings like this because um, so I get refreshing my head and it's not still every time the same training. And yeah, I like to be in the mountains and um, yeah, there is still snow up. So it's um, yeah, really crazy that right now I'm up sometimes in the mountains because normally I should play in the in the stadium soccer. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm a positive guy and I do my, do my best and also to help the government that um, we pass this time. Nice. Okay. Um when you're not training at home, you're obviously spending a lot of time there. How have you been spending your time? What have you been What have you been doing? Yeah, right now, I have to say I was never bored the last three weeks because, um, yeah, I have a lot to do with my university stuff. Um, I study business administration and sports online. So I, every day I invest a um, few hours for the university. Then I have other few hours for my trainings for the home program. And yeah, the rest, um, like all the others, um, sometimes I watch Netflix, um, I cook. Um, yeah, right now I'm in my mother's house, so I don't have to cook. It's also really nice. And um, yeah, that's all. And um, also, of course, we communicate also a lot um, with, with the team together and also with my friends. So I have really to say that I was not bored the last three weeks, but um, I hopefully we pass this time fast. I agree. Okay, so uh, tell us a little bit about what you've been watching on, on Netflix and, and what things you've been cooking while you've been at home. Um, yeah, Netflix, I watched them um, the last two weeks um, with my wife together. So first of all, there was um, Elite, the third um, episode, like everybody watched um, this from my soccer teammates and everything. And yeah. they are also... Oh, my wife uh, wanted to watch the the series Toy Boy, and that is the okay. last one uh, what I watched together with her. Um, if I am alone and I watch Netflix, I prefer more um, yeah sports documentaries. Um, I watched already the Alan Iverson documentary on Netflix. Um, I also watched um, Sunderland series, um, Lead series. Yeah, that's the last ones which I was watching alone. Okay. Cool. There's a lot of a lot of stuff there. I've also the Toy Boy series. That's a Spanish one, right? Yeah, that's the like third episode after um, how you say in English, uh, House de Skeldes, Casa de Papel, in, in Spanish. Yeah. And then the second one was Elite, and now the third one is um, Toy Boy from the Spanish company. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Um, let's talk a little bit about your mates now. You said you've been keeping in contact with them via video. Which ones do you do you write with the most? Yeah. Uh, first of all, in the last two weeks, we had a lot to communicate about um, because today um, everybody knows um, what we are doing as a team. So we help the club with a third of our salaries um, that we, 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 we help the club in this um, yeah, crease that um, they don't get too much money trouble. So everybody of us give a third of our salary to the club in the next yeah, few weeks or months, how long it will ever be. And um, that's why we communicate the last few weeks a lot. Um, um, I don't know how to say in English, it's called like our, we have four or five people around the team which are talking together and take decisions and talk to the other players that they are like on the, in the front row. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I talked a lot to them, of course. 
and also to young players if they have questions or something. I think we have a good team, a strong team that also shows the character of our team that we found a solution um, for the whole team because really everybody of the players um, spend a third um, or spend um, put a third to the club. So it's um, of our salary. So it's uh, really cool that everybody's involved and everybody is helping the team. And that shows me that we have a, a really good character in our team and that everybody wants to give their best and also understand what's going on now. And yeah, that it's 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 cool that everybody's proud to be a player of Rapid because that shows me that everybody um, helps the club. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a really good initiative what you've done. And that was the last few um, two weeks about communication, the most important thing. And of course, sometimes we talk about private things. And of course, um, everybody have um, better friends in the team. And of course, it's like the players which are more in the same age. They communicate more. So the young players, they play PlayStation together online or, yeah, they communicate with this stuff. And they are like the older players. They talk about the children. They talk about, I don't know, few build a house or whatever. Of course, then um, you have like those groups which are building a little bit because of the age. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about your opinions of some of your, your teammates right now, if that's okay. So who, who would you say is the, the biggest joker in the Rapid Vienna squad? So the guy who likes to laugh a lot. Yeah, good joker is also um, Christopher Tibon. Um, okay. I think uh, Tobias Knoblach is also a good joker. He's also always positive and funny, have funny stories. And also Philipp Schobersberger, but he's, uh, I don't know if I say this right in English, humor. Um, I don't know, like his mind, if everybody can understand his jokes, you have to be, um, sometimes you have to to shut down your heart because um, sometimes his jokes are really strong and heavy. Yeah. Dark humor, we call it in English. Okay, yeah, something yeah. like that, yeah. Okay. Um, what about the, the DJ in your squad? Who plays the, the music in the changing rooms? Yeah, like now, the last few years, I am doing that because I'm a long time already in the club. And um, yeah, I always mix the music and I try to to put songs from everybody in the playlist. And uh, my my good thing or my, my strongness about that is that I listen to a few different um, uh, style of music. So um, I listen to house, hip hop and also to German music. And yeah, so I have a good mix inside also to Latin music. And I think the mix is important because um, if you just um, play your own music all the time, it, not everybody will be satisfied. Of course, not everybody will be all the time satisfied, but I think the most are satisfied and this, that's okay. And um, yeah, because the young players, they only listen to hip hop and German hip hop. Mm -hmm. And of course, the older players, they don't want to listen just uh, German hip hop. So I mix that and yeah. I hopefully I can do it a few years more, but yeah, I'm also getting older and I also have to listen sometimes to the to the music of the young ones. And yeah, 10 years ago, I also listened to but the age um, turns a little bit. It's a compromise, huh? So you need to, to find the right balance of, of your music and theirs. Yeah, exactly. So what about the, the person in the squad with the best fashion sense? Who wears the best clothes? Um... Yeah, as you know, um, fashion is a, a big, a big thing for soccer players. Um, so they are really fancy sometimes and crazy about fashion. Um, for me, I like like more. Um, how can I say, dressed up, classic style. Um, and yeah, of course, the young ones getting more fancy. But I will say, I like the style of uh, Stefan Auer, also of Christopher Divon. And yeah, the young ones they getting crazy sometimes, and it's too much for me. It's good to find out a little bit about the squad. Um, let's just finish with some some questions about your football experiences. Um, we saw on Instagram over the winter break that you'd been to the UK to see some some football matches um, right, from yeah. some of your teammates. Tell us about that. Yeah, that's right. Um, because um, about our pregnancy, about my wife, um, we cancelled our uh, holiday to Costa Rica and Panama about, um, yeah, the mosquito stuff and so we stayed at home and um, we just flew after um, short I think on two days before um, New Year's Eve um, we flew to we flew to um, to Oman to Muscat with my wife together 
and the days um, between Christmas and New Year's Eve, I have a few days more. And so I try to search a small trip for me. And yeah, then uh, one, two of my friends, um, they are also time. And yeah, we decided to go to uh, first to Manchester because, um, yeah, I'm a good friend of um, Troy Linton. He's a good friend of mine. We spent two years together in Rapid Vienna. And all outside of the pitch, we did a lot. We, um, yeah, was often in in restaurants or we were often together somewhere outside on the on the sea on the lake or something like that and um yeah i still a good connection to him so we was um, in manchester watched the game united against newcastle i think it was 26 of december and then uh, two days later we so one day later we drove with the train from manchester to newcastle and they played two days later in the boxing days at home against everton so we watched the game against Everton and um, yeah, we stayed with him together in his house um, after the game. And then, um, yeah, we were lucky because uh, also on the next day there, were, there was the, the old firm. So um, Celtic, uh, Rangers, no, Celtic against Rangers at Celtic Park. And yeah, also Bolingoli is playing in uh, Celtic Glasgow. And yeah, it was just, um, yeah, the situation doesn't allow that we can see us. So we only saw the game, but they can't meet him because before the game, it was not possible. And after the game, I had my flight back because the next day I was um, yeah off with, to, to the holiday with my wife. So I didn't meet him there, um, but I watched the game and yeah, it was a good trip. So I saw three good games. I saw three impressive stadiums and it was a good trip. And I liked those trips. Um, because yeah, I'm sports driven and I like to watch also soccer. And for me, it's different to be at the stadium or in a stadium and compared to watch it just on the TV. I agree. Yeah, because I like so. the atmosphere, I like the feelings in mm -hmm. the stadium. And then you see, I don't know, okay, on TV, you're only focused on the game, that's good. But also in the stadium, it's good to catch up um, the atmosphere, how other clubs are working. How are other players doing on the pitch? How is the warm up and everything? And you see a lot of uh, background stories and about the city, about the club, and interesting. Do you remember what your first ever match was that you saw live in a stadium? To be honest, I think it was around, I don't know, 1995, around that. And it was, of course, in Salzburg. It was um, Austria Salzburg. And it was, I think, really against Rapid Vienna because, um, yeah, in the past um, we had um, in Salzburg a great team. It was called Oster Salzburg. They played in the UEFA Cup finals. And so, yeah, my brother and my father took me first time to a game in the old stadium in Lane. And I think it was Oster Salzburg against Rapid Vienna. Nice. Okay. What would you say is your best moment ever on a football pitch, personally? My best moment ever, Paul. I think um, I you, you still can hear me? Yes, yeah. Okay, sorry, because I got just a call, but I can't see you, but um, I can hear you and, I, and you see me also, so it's fine. Yeah. Um, my first, uh, my best experience in the football game, I think not just as a player, but uh, I don't know about uh, feeling and everywhere. Uh, maybe it was my first goal in the Europa League against Villarreal for Rapid Vienna. And also, I can remember a away game against the uh, Glasgow Rangers when we walked in in the, in the Ibrox Park. And it was um, the comeback of the Rangers after 10 years, um, which they weren't uh, playing in uh, international cups. And it was a great atmosphere because our fans did a great choreo. Um, and it was like, come on, you boys in green. And then mm -hmm. the Rangers thought, OK, we have 10 years, no um, international game. And our first game is against Celtic or what? Because everybody was in green mm -hmm. and, and white. And I can imagine how was the feeling for the Rangers supporters. So the <laughs> atmosphere was really crazy also from our side. And this was really good. And of course, I can say every goal in the past of me, of, uh, from me, of mine in the, in the Tarbis against Austria Vienna, I'm lucky that I scored in the last few years a few goals against uh, Austria Wien and every, every goal against them is special also for me. And what was also special was my first um, or my second game with Rapid Vienna away in Salzburg. With, uh, it was 2014, 2015, something around that. And we won in Salzburg and I scored one goal. That was also special for me because I was the whole youth in Salzburg and yeah, a lot of my family mates and team, old, old friends was in the stadium. And so I was also proud that I can score. And yeah, Salzburg had a great team at this time that was playing uh, Sacho Mane and um, 
yeah, Kevin Campbell and Soriano. So it was really, really cool to score and win in Salzburg. Yes. Okay. You mentioned earlier that you, you're doing a degree in, in business administration. Um, what are your plans when you when you stop your active playing career? Is that something you want to pursue, like a football administration role? Yeah, I'm not sure yet exactly, but um, what I know is I want to see both sides. I want to see the the trainer, the coach's side. So I also want to do my my coach license, and also I want to see the background about organization, administration, and soccer. So I try to 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 pass um yeah both educations, and um, if I can do that. I don't know, hopefully in five, six years, I'm ready to decide in which direction I want to go. And so I want to just have the option that um, both both sides are open for me. Okay, sounds cool. Something to pursue for after your, your playing career. Um, thanks so much for joining us. It's really appreciated that you've, you've taken the time. We've just got one last question for you. Um, we're having a Skype chat right now. If you could have a Skype chat with any footballer, past or present, who would you like to speak to the most? It have to be a footballer or can I choose also another person? We'll let you choose another person. Okay, I tell you too. So as a footballer, I want to talk uh, to Andrea Pirlo because um, I love his style to play. I like his passes and he's a clever guy. And also that's what I mean. He's dressed up good. He's like a sir and um, that's what I like. And the other person um, should be LeBron James because he's, for me, a really, really impressive person. Um, I love his athletic. Um, I love his style to play because um, he's athletic so good, but he also has uh, a good um, shot. And um, so I like his style. And this with those two persons, will be so good um, to chat. Some really good choices. Well, thanks again so much for your time. Best of luck with your, your training in isolation as well. And, and hopefully we see you back on a, a football pitch sometime soon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much also for the invitation and for the nice talk. And yeah, as you said, hopefully we stay healthy and see us soon.